Hello guys and welcome back to Scale Down Customs. In this video series I'm going to be working on the 360 Modena. This is the 124 scale kit from Tamiya. So let's open her up and see what uh, see what we got. Of course the body is molded in red in true Ferrari tradition. Uh, looks like I've got a bend in the A pillar. That's unfortunate and very common. I've had a couple kits that that's happened with, so we'll see if we can uh, we can work with that. Nice decal sheet in there. Our clear parts. I always like when they have the the metal transfer stickers. Those things look really sharp when they're on the on the cars. Glass is looking really nice. I really like how Tamiya does their chrome. It's not too shiny and toy looking. It's a little more dulled down and actually looks more authentic. So a lot of times with the other chromes, I end up stripping that off and then re-chroming them. I'm not sure I might leave this chrome on there, but we'll see when we get to it. Anyway, those are looking really nice. Tires are looking really good. Nice tread pattern on there. Different widths, wider on the rear. And the poly caps to put those on. Engine detail. Oh, it even comes with the screen. I love when they add those in. That's such a nice feature. Looks like some nice disc brakes with the cross drill holes in them. Engine looks really detailed. Oh, nice suspension springs. Wow, this is, I'm excited. This is looking really good. And then the rest of the black. Floor pan, the rest of the engine, engine components, interior components. Wow, nicely detailed dash and bucket seats. Door panels with speaker screens on there. Very nice. All right. Oh, they even have window masks. These are also very helpful. The instruction sheet. Very detailed. I like how they separate the difference from the part number with the paint callout code. Um, it just helps kind of eliminate confusion, so that's really a nice feature with, from Tamiya as well. All right, I always love when they give a little bit of the car's history. It's always fun to read and learn a little bit more about the car you're building. All right, so for the paint color, I thought about red, but I think I'm gonna go with the Ferrari yellow color. So we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. The thing about using a light colored paint on a dark colored body is you really have to make sure that that body is completely covered up with a heavy primer. So let's take this body out and look at it a little bit more closely. Some slight mold lines on the side, not too bad. Those will clean up nicely. Very crisp body, very crisp lines. Looks to be really straight, except for the crushed A pillar. We'll see if we can do our best to straighten that out. Very nice. Not seeing too many sink marks. Very clean. Very good. And a closer look at our little decal sheet. Very crisp decals. So let's get to work. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen me work before, I, I actually get, I, I've gotten a lot of my ideas from other people, um, watching other channels, seeing other people work. A lot of the techniques that I use lately is from, uh, I got from Tom with the Scale Modeling channel. Um, and this is a technique that he uses. Great work. Uh, like I said, I've gotten a lot of uh, inspiration and ideas from him, so thanks Tom. But what I'm doing is we're using the, the permanent marker as a guide code. And what that means is I'm taking the marker and I'm going over my mold lines, um, the basically the little raised lines that aren't supposed to be there so that I can see how far I need to sand them down. So that gives you a little bit better of an example. Now you can see that line really, really well. And sometimes they're hard to see like on this kit, they're really, really small. So the Tamiya kits are usually pretty good about making their mold lines as minimal as possible. But anyway, that's why I use the marker as a guide coat. And that way I can see where my mold lines are. So I'm gonna go through and get this body cleaned up and get it sanded down and ready for, uh, ready for primer. For sanding, I'm just using the Tamiya sanding sponges. I like these a lot. They're, uh, they, you can get them in different grains. And then these are just some nail files. One side is rougher than the other. I don't remember what the grid is on this. 
pretty light, but uh, I like these as well because it gives me a, a flat surface to sand from. Right, that panel line there is really shallow. I want to make that a little bit deeper. So to do that, I'll be using my Tamiya scribing tool. Now, in using these scribing tools, I always skip off and end up scraping the body a little bit, but that's okay. I'll just make a mark on it so that I know that's where I've screwed something up and that, that I need to come back and address that when I'm ready to do so later. All right, so I got the body cleaned up, uh, sanded down. I've still got some scrapes and mistakes that we'll need to fill in in a little bit. But one of the things I like to do prior to priming and painting is go through the instructions and see if there's any other body parts that can go on the body prior to painting. Because I like to use this Tamiya Extra Thin Cement because what this does it's not a glue, but it actually melts the plastic together and creates a really strong bond. So these fenders that go into the rear wheel well, these can actually go on prior to painting uh, because the instructions call to put this on, put these on prior to mounting the chassis. So we are gonna glue these on now so that I can get a better bond and hopefully they never come off again. All right, we're gonna let that set up and then we're gonna keep moving ahead with uh, body prep. All right, I went ahead and just filled in my imperfections there. Just brush painted on everywhere I had a scratch. I just kind of touch it up with a little bit of Mr. Surface 500. This is really good stuff. It's really thick, it goes on thick and then it dries up and you can sand it down smooth. I've been, been liking that a lot and then I just used it to uh, fill in some ejection pin marks on the uh, rear latch. So once again, we'll let that dry up and, uh, and sand those down and we'll be ready for some primer. So in preparation for primer, I'm gonna do a little bit of pre-assembly. We're gonna put the engine block together, uh, valve covers and other things that are the, gonna be the same color, the flat aluminum. We're gonna assemble those now and then put some primer on it. So I'll just be using my Tamiya flush cutters, a regular trusty X-Acto blade, and then we'll be using our Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to get a really good bond on those pieces together. All right, so I got her primed up. I went over it with black. The Steinal Res primer is what I've been using. So I gave it a coat of black just to hide that red as much as possible. And then went over it with white. And then I got the engine and some of the other components um, just with the gray Steinal Res primers. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get this thing sanded down and ready for paint. I want this to be as smooth as possible so that paint goes on nice and smooth as well. So for sanding, I'll probably just be using, um, this is a 1500 grit sanding sponge from Tamiya. And then uh, I might use the sandpaper, the 3000 grit.
right, so we got the one decal on there. Uh, about ready for some clear, but before I do that, I want to make the most use of the clear as I can when I have it in my airbrush. So I want to clear the, the rims as well. The rims also call for a decal. I think I struggle the most with the rims. There's always a lot of edges around there, mold lines and stuff, so I spend a lot of time sanding these rims down, uh, which is the only reason I decided to de-chrome them. Um, the kit chrome is actually really nice. I think I'm going to leave most of everything else in the kit chrome, but because I had to do so much work with the rims, uh, I ended up just stripping the chrome off, sanding everything down the way I like it, and then I'm going to spray it back up and we'll do probably just use some uh, alclad aluminum for that so we'll get those painted up and then for the paint on the car body i just use the gravity colors the ferrari yellow modena the ferrari yellow so let's go spray our rims So as I was spraying these and I was so pleased at how well they were turning out, looking like nice uh, flat aluminum rims, I noticed in the center that there is a huge divot. That would have been nice to notice that before I primed and painted them, but nonetheless, we will address that now. And yes, it is on all four rims. So we'll use our Mr. Surface 500 again, and we're just gonna fill those and let them dry up and maybe we'll need to fill them again. All right, I'm gonna throw these in the dryer and let those things dry up. And that's fine because we have a ton of other parts to paint. Black, aluminum, red, all kinds of stuff. So we've got a lot to do still on this one. So we'll get these in the dryer and then uh, maybe we'll do some, paint some semi-gloss black. All right, so I got these filled in, reprimed and repainted. And as you can see, there's still a dimple in there. And what I forget sometimes is that Mr. Surface 500, even though it's a really good filler or primer for scratches and stuff like that, it is not a body filler. So I'm gonna get these things stripped down and I'm just going to put them in my isopropyl alcohol and let those sit for a while. We're going to strip those down and start over. And we're going to use an actual filler, uh, either a Tamiya putty or something like that, to fill those in and get it done the right way. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, guys.